Right now, take your Bible, say, this is God's holy word. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Holy men of old spoke as they were moved upon by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, move upon Kubis to teach me tonight and upon this whole congregation and over the airwaves that people will be touched, blessed, and healed in Jesus' name. Right, let's go tonight to Isaiah 42. And at least you can maybe just go to Joel and Isaiah. Okay. In Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says, from verse 13, you can just listen. We are in Isaiah 42. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, so that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we might receive the Spirit by faith. Okay? So there's the blessings of Abraham. Now, it's not hard to find those blessings. God said, you know, uh, in blessing I will bless you and in multiplying I will multiply you. And if you go to Genesis chapter 13, we already see, and Abraham was very rich in cattle. Very rich in gold and very rich in silver. I mean, that's a blessing, people. And wherever Abram went, God just blessed him. But then the Bible says, unto Abram and his seed, this promise of blessings was made. He doesn't say unto seeds are showing unto many, but seed showing unto one. He says, and this seed is Christ. But verse 29 of Galatians 3 says, if we then belong to Christ, we are Abraham's seed and heirs to the promise. So we that belong to Christ are heirs of the promise. Man, man. Now I want to ask you, how many of us move in this blessings of Abraham that says very rich in cattle? Okay, I know many of you are not cattle farmers, but very rich in cars. I mean, they stand lined up in your drive where you don't know where to park the stuff because people just bring it and say, can I bless you with this car? Can I bless you with this car? You know, and after a month you say, Lord, what must I do with all the cars? God says, put in the paper that you are blessed. You know, very rich in gold. You know, I mean, the mines have got problems now, but imagine you got more gold than the mines, you know, more silver than the I mean, it's not a fairy tale, people. It's in the Bible. Abraham was very rich in the stuff. Think of David. How rich must this man have been? I mean, all the gold that was in Solomon's temple was actually David's gold. Not to talk about Solomon's gold. I mean, this man, they're still talking about his gold today. These people were blessed. Hmm? So if we are the heirs of the promise, somewhere we must be blessed. Blessed in our finances, blessed in our bodies, blessed in our souls, peace in our minds, victory in our spirits, rejoicing day by day, smiling wherever we go. No depression, no stress, no anxiety, no fear, no turmoil, peace and joy and happiness and health and wealth. Blessed. I remember I was barely saved and God gave me two scriptures. And my life was built on those two scriptures. Now, just listen. If you are not living in the blessings, you've been robbed. Okay? But, Kubis, how can I be robbed? I never had anything. You robbed because you never saw anything, man. You are supposed to have all the blessings. Okay, just before Annalise read, listen, let's go to Isaiah 42. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and plundered. They are all of them snared in holes and hidden in houses of bondage. I mean, if you've got debt, you're in bondage. If you're sick, you're in bondage. Ask me. If you've got problems, you're in bondage. They have become a prey with no one to deliver them. A spoil with no one to say, restore them. Is that all right? Verse 22. Who is there among you who will give ear to this, who will listen and hear in time to come? Okay? People are plundered, they are spoiled, 
they've been robbed, stuff has been taken away from them, yet there is no one that will cry, restore. So God says, who is there that have ears, that will hear this in time to come? In other words, he's talking about a future generation that is the right now generation. So somebody must say, restore. Restore. Okay, if Israel didn't want to say it, I will. I will. I will. I will, I will, restore. Yeah, now we're getting there, now we're getting there. I mean, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Okay, listen to these two scriptures. The first one is in Joel chapter 2. Just listen, verse 21 through... 26 or something. No. Fear not, Ole, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Amen. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth the fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. That's you, be glad. Ha ha, glad. And rejoice in the Lord your God. <laughs> For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain yes. in mm. the first month. Now listen what's going to happen. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Ah, the floors will be full of wheat. In other words, you're going to have good harvest, man. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. So maybe you're going to get drunk too. Okay, no. And okay, drunk in the Holy Ghost. Okay, not with wine. And I will... Listen, listen, listen. This is God speaking. And I will restore to you... Oh, to you. The years... Listen that the to locusts the years, eaten. okay? And I will restore to you the years that mm. the locust have eaten, mm. the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. That's them. good enough. It's not just the, the floors that's going to be full. It's not just the vat that's going to be overflowing. God says I will also restore the years. In other words, you're not going to just get things. You're going to get years added to your life. You're going to get your youth renewed. God says, I will restore. Okay, so let's put some stuff there. God's going to restore. For you, man. Right, okay, God's going to restore for you. Okay, there's going to, a lot of things going to happen. And the next verse says, you shall eat and have plenty. Is that right? And you shall eat in ah. plenty. <laughs> yeah. And be satisfied. Oh. And praise the name of the Woo. Lord. We're going to eat. We're going to be satisfied. We're going to have plenty. We're going to praise the name of the Lord. Listen to Isaiah 58 verse 8 in the Amplified. Just listen. <laughs> then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Mm. And thy health shall spring for speedily. Ah. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Yeah. And the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Mm. Rare reward. Yes. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, and thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am okay. I. Okay, so the Lord's going to restore years to you? Yes. Things and years. Yes. Hmm? I like this one in Isaiah 58. God's even going to restore your prayer life. Yes. To such an extent that when you call, he will answer. Come on, you can clap for that one. I mean, I mean, I mean, if, if we must get a tape recorder running now of your prayers of the last month, how many can you tick off that's been answered? And how many is just, oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, and it's not yet been answered. God says the day will come when restoration will be so great. Your light will break forth, your health will break forth. And when you call on the name of the Lord, he will just say, here I am. When you say, oh Lord, he's going to say, yes, what is it you want? 
I like it. 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 Health, prayers, everything's gonna be restored, man. So much, so much. Ah, oh, I don't know. Where were we? Oh, we were with restoration. Hmm? Refreshing. Renewing. Just think of the scripture we grow up with. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. You shall not what? In other words, you're going to have so much that there's nothing that you want anymore. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What's this Lord going to do? He's going to lead you to green pastures. He's going to make you lie down. That's why people fall when we pray for them. <laughs> then he's going to take you to still water. Oh, is it not big if a fear can sit? Okay. He's going to lead you to still water. And what is he going to do there? He's going to restore your soul. He's going to refresh your soul. Come on. <laughs> it's restoration time. It's refreshing time. It's renewal time. Hmm? I mean, listen to Matthew 11, 28 and 29, the same as, 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 as uh, uh, Psalm 23. He says, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. Learn of me, for I'm meek and gentle, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Or other way around, my yoke is easier. Now what? Okay, the yoke and the burden, the one is light and the one's easy, whatever comes first. Okay, I don't know if you have the burden or the yoke first, but whatever comes is light and the other thing is easy, so it doesn't matter in any case. Okay, so God's going to do great stuff for you. Let's go to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Your health. Man, what did we read there? He's going to restore your health and stuff. Eh? Things for you, your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Oh, what did we just do? Your soul. It restores your soul. That means your mind. How many would like their minds to be at rest? I mean, even sitting in this meeting tonight. <laughs> you know, tomorrow this must happen, Monday this must happen. I must still do that on Tuesday. I must go see that guy. Hey, write it in a book, then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, right, Tuesday I'm going to do that, Monday I'm going to do that. Then you don't have to sit here worry. Let the book worry. I saw something. When we talk about healing in the Bible, the word healing in the Greek, not, I'm not a Greek scholar, so I can't say, I'm a Greek scholar, I've got three degrees in Greek, I've got seven doctor's degrees, I've got three, I've got nothing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm born again, that's it. Okay. But I did check it up, you know, you've got computers nowadays, you can check doo -doo -doo what the word means, and you look like you're very bright because you looked on the computer. Okay. <laughs> but the word for heal is therapeo, where we get therapy and stuff from that. But that word actually means, it doesn't mean heal, it means restore to health. So every time you read healing in the Bible, it actually says restore to health, restore to health. Restore to hell. Okay, so we got that there. So let's go to Jeremiah. I think that's a good scripture that I wanted to go to. Jeremiah, it was chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 22. This is awesome. You're going to scream, wow, yes, amen. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people restored? Because Zion no longer enjoyed the presence of the great physician. In other words, God was not moving there amongst them anymore like in Exodus 15 where he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 15 where he says, I will take away from the midst of thee all sickness. I will lay none of the diseases of Egypt upon you. And stuff like that. They didn't see it anymore. But then Jesus came. Yeah. Matthew 8, Matthew 8. We're just going to go through a couple of healing scriptures. Okay, this is a story of the centurion that came to Jesus, and this is what he said. Verse 6, Lord, my servant boy is lying at the house, paralyzed and distressed with intense pains. Jesus said to him, I will come and restore him. Okay, I'm reading the Amplified. 
I will come. Now we know the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Just speak a word only because I'm a man under authority and I have people under me. When I say come, they come. When I say go, they go. Jesus said, I have not seen such great faith, no, not in the whole house of Israel. And then Jesus said, okay? Verse 13. Then the centurion, then to the centurion, Jesus said, go, it shall be done for you as you have believed. And the servant boy was restored to health at that very moment. Hmm? And when Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying ill with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began waiting on them. When evening came, they brought to him many who were under the power of demons. And he drove out the spirits with a word and restored to health all who were sick. Man, man, man. Somebody just need to say something now. Where were we? Five, okay. So six. Restored to health. How many in this house say tonight, God... I need perfection in my body. I mean, uh, if you get sinus now and then, you need restoration of health. If you get a headache now and then, you need restoration of health. I mean, we're making the chemists rich, we're making the doctors rich, we're making the hospital rich. Hospitals and doctors are for heathens. I know, ask me, I was there, you know, it's, it's for heathen people. We're supposed to come to church and get our healing and our health. If you didn't get it, people, I feel like, I wish I had a voice that I can shout. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Where is then the restoration of the health of God's people? Hmm? Where is the great physician? Is he amongst us or is he not amongst us? Hmm? He is amongst us. To do what? To bring restoration of our health to us. He said, okay, there's one point there. Maybe I should touch on it. Yes, I will. He said... And they brought unto him many that were possessed with demons, and he cast out the demons with a word and restored to health. In other words, sickness is of the devil. Sickness is of the devil because Jesus cast the devils out, and then the sick were restored. I always thought it was two different kinds of people. The one group were demon-possessed and the other group were sick. So Jesus first cast out the devils. Out! Who are you? Where are you from? What's your name? How many are you? What are you doing here? Go back to where you come from. Go to the pit of hell. Go burn in the fire. I thought Jesus... And then he finished and said, Now let's heal the sick. Heal, heal, heal. Then I read, No, 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 no. He cast the devils out and the sick were restored to health. you don't believe me, listen to Acts 10, 38. Peter is preaching in Cornelius' house. And he says in verse 38, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So sick people are oppressed of the devil. Come on, Jesus healed them and they said, oh, he's driving out devils by the power of the devil. Jesus says, no, a house that's divided against himself cannot stand. So I'm not in the same camp as the devil. That's why I heal people because they are oppressed of the devil. Quibbis, can a Christian have a devil? If you're sick, you have a devil. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20. Behold, a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years came up behind him, touched the fringe of his garment. She touched his clothes. For she kept saying to herself. Everybody say, she kept saying. She kept saying. She kept saying. She kept saying. saying. You see, we heard so much about confession of faith and saying the right words and speaking the word of Jesus. But, you know, after two or three times, most people will stop. Hmm? We've got to keep on saying, with the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. With the stripes of Jesus. Is it mind over matter? Call it whatever you want to call it. 
This woman kept on saying, if I can just touch his clothes, if I can just touch his clothes, if I can just touch his clothes. He was pushing through the crowds, if I can just touch his clothes, if we can just, listen. For she kept on saying to herself, if only I touch his garment, I shall be restored to health. Jesus turned around and seeing her, he said, take courage, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And at once, the woman was restored to health. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Keep on. Keep on saying. Bless you. Keep on saying. Keep on saying what the word of God says. Keep on saying. Keep on saying. Keep on saying. Let's go to Job 32. This is Job. Now you know Job was in a terror. He was in a tight spot. 32, 17. I also will answer my God assigned part. I also will declare my opinion and my knowledge. For I am full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. My breast is as wine that has no vent like new wineskins. It is ready to burst. I must speak that I may get relief and be refreshed. I will open my lips and I will answer. Oh man, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. Job says, on the inside of me, it's like wine that wants to burst out. He says, I'm so full of words because of this wine that want to just come out. I just got to speak. I just got to speak. I just got to speak. And that scripture, you know, a great place where I see it is in Isaiah 28 verse 12. Just listen. He says, with lips that stammer and with stuttering tongues, I will speak to these people. Now, Paul quotes that in 1 Corinthians 14 as the gift of of the Holy Spirit where people speak in tongues. I will speak through stuttering and stammering lips because we don't understand it. And this is the refreshing or the restoration, but they would not listen. Okay, now remember where we started in Isaiah 42, you know? He says, if they can just call restore, but I can't find anybody that will say restore. But in the future generations, will there be somebody that have an ear that can hear and will say restore? Now the same way he says, I will give you tongues to speak in. And this will be refreshing and restoration. Bless you, brother. This will be refreshing and restoration. He says, but they still would not listen. Now like in the beginning I said, I will listen. So right now I will listen too. I will say, Rapra Shiki Toto. Speak. This is refreshing. If you don't believe it, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4 says, He that speaks in an unknown tongue will edify himself, will refresh himself, will build up himself. So I'm talking about restoration and refreshing. I want it. So I will say, restore God, restore. Because he said he will restore the years. He will restore the overflowing of the room, of the vats, of the money, of the eating. Everything will be in plenty. I will be satisfied, man. I will have more than enough. I will live an abundant life. What I didn't have before, I'm going to have. What I had and was stolen, I'm going to have more this time. 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Are you there? Where? Huh? 2 Corinthians 4. Yes, that's where we're supposed to be, man. He says, verse 13, Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had... As he had who wrote, I have believed, therefore have I spoken. We too believe, therefore we speak. For those who don't know, we're at that point of speaking. Hmm? Assured that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you in his presence. Doesn't Romans 8, 11 says, if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, then the same spirit that raised up Christ will quicken your mortal body. The Amplified says, will restore this body and bring it into immortality. Come on, come on. Do you think, do you think Adam was made to die? Or did God made them to live? 
It's their fault that they died. But God said, let us take an angel and protect the way to the tree of life. That perhaps if they break through and eat of that tree, they shall live and never die. Yes, amen. Hmm? amen. Is there anybody that want to live? Yes. Yes. Hmm? Let's have a vote. Who wants to live? Okay, the couple of hands that's not up. Those who want to die, come. We pray for you right now. <laughs> Verse 16. Therefore, we do not become discouraged. Though our outer man is decaying and wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed. Restored. Refreshed. Revived. Day by day. Listen, verse 17. For our light momentary affliction, this, this slight distress of the passing hour, is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively surpassing all comparisons, all calculations, a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. <laughs> Where's my calculator? Uh, uh, uh. No, this is beyond calculation. To the power of 10 trillion billion zillion. Da, da, da. No, the blessings I want you to have is beyond calculations. Yes! Listen to verse 18. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are visible are temporal, brief, and fleeting, but the things that are vis invisible are deathless and everlasting. <laughs> faith, man, for the unseen. I mean, that's more or less what faith is. Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. Take it, brother. So here it is. If we look at what we can see, if I look in the mirror and say, oh, here I go, this can Ha! Hmm? Hmm? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I mean, you feel like that at times. You've got no strength to get up. People must help you up. They must help you to get clean. They must help you to go to the toilet. They must feed you. You can't eat by yourself. It's not sports. And the doctors say you will not make it till tomorrow morning. Then they say you're not going to make it to Friday. You know? And, and you feel it. You feel you're not going to make it. But something on the inside of you, though our outward man is decaying, our inward man, is restored day by day because we do not look at what we see but we look at the unseen and we call the things that are not as though they already were faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen huh? mark chapter 3 verse 1 again jesus went into a synagogue and a man, man, a man, a man, man was there who had one withered hand as the result of accident or disease. And the Pharisees kept watching Jesus closely to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might get a charge to bring against him. Oh, ho, ho. And he said to the man, see, Jesus irritated the religious guys, so I just do it Jesus style. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Get up and stand here in the midst. And he said to them, Is it lawful and right on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? To save life or to take it? But they kept silence. Now listen to verse 5. This is going to break a few of you through tonight. And he glanced around at them with vexation and anger. Afrikaans by what? <laughs> Grieved. Okay vexation, anger, grieved at the hardening of their hearts and said to the man, hold out your hand. 
He held it out and his hand was completely restored. Okay. I want to put there emotions. Imagine, the Bible says, Jesus was vexed, he was angry, he was man. I mean, here's Jesus. Mm. You know, is it right to do good on the Sabbath or not? Mm. Look at them, you know. He know what they're thinking. They think, mm. what's he going to do on Sabbath? What's he going to do on the Sabbath? So, with an angry heart, Jesus is angry. And he says, stretch out your hand, man. You know? Okay. Hey, I said, no, no. <laughs> Stretch out your hand. The guy, totally restored. Amen. And God showed me this one day. Um, imagine Jesus going into the temple and throwing out the money changers. He's got a whip in his hand, chasing out the animals. <coughs> there goes a sheep. There goes a goat. Open the pigeon cages. <coughs> Flying all over the house, man. <coughs> you know? Pharisees start running. He said, you better run, I'll get you too, you know. <laughs> I don't know how it was, but it was rough. He chased them all out. And after they were all out, you go read it. He says, and they brought unto him the sick, and he healed them all. <laughs> hmm? Imagine, imagine, you are just flipping. <laughs> Things are not good for you. And you're screaming in the house. And you overthrow a table. I know you never do it. You never will do it. You never did it. But maybe you saw your dad once do it. You know. And there's a knock on the door. Open the door. Can I help you? I mean, you're still fuming, you know? Smoke is coming out your ears. You, huh? you feel like, you know, you know, training your dragon or something. Yeah. You guys, will you pray for me? You say, pray for you. Mm. Our church is Sunday, 4 p.m. Now go, 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 go. Huh? Imagine if we get victory over our emotions. And realize our emotions doesn't do the thing. It's faith in God that does it. That means I don't pray for sick when I feel good. I don't pray for sick when I feel bad. I pray for them because the word says go heal the sick. Hmm? Okay. So with everything else in my life, don't trust your emotions. Trust God. It's not your emotions. Oh, man, that was a very good point. Let's go to Mark 6. Bless you. Man, 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 man. Verse 55. This is a cool one. This is a cool one. Listen. And they ran about the whole countryside, bless you, and began to carry around sick people on their sleeping pads or mats to any place where they heard he was. Hey, get the picture. Get the picture. Get the picture. They ran about the whole countryside and began to carry around sick people on sleeping pads. Or excuse me, excuse me. What are you doing? Excuse me. Traffic jam. Scop. Hey, 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 hey. Beds first. Okay, stretchers, stretchers now. Okay. <laughs> wheelchairs. Come, come, wheelchairs. Was it just so in the days of Jesus? No. In Acts chapter 5, it says they carried out the sick. Same way, on beds and carpets, so that with the intention that if Peter would pass by, his shadow may fall on them. Huh? Listen, and wherever he came into villages or cities or the country, they would lay the sick in the marketplaces and beg him that they may touch even the fringe of his outer garment. As many as touch him were restored to health. Mm. I want to put their items. 
Remember Acts 19, verse 11 and 12? God wrought special miracles by the hands of the apostle Paul so that cloths that touched his skin were taken to the sick, they were healed, and demons were cast out. Items, shadows. Hmm? Maybe we must get spotlights from behind. Hmm? Throw a shadow then while I preach. Hmm. Hmm. Acts chapter 8. Yes, but I've got nothing to be restored. If you're not totally well, if you're not totally blessed, if you're not totally rich, if you're not totally successful, if you're not totally... I mean, look at Joshua, man. God said to him, you will be prosperous and successful in all your ways. People will see it. And God said to Joshua, this day I will make you famous in the sight of all Israel. Hey. God wants people to know about you, man. Yeah, oh, bless you. God wants people to know about you. God wants you blessed. Acts 8, here's the, the deacon Philip. Verse 5. Philip the deacon, not the apostle, went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ, the, the Christ, the Messiah to them. And great crowds of people with one accord listened to and heeded what was said by Philip as they heard him and watched the miracles and wonders which he kept performing from time to time. For foul spirits, Hunersgeeste, <laughs> foul spirits came out of many who were possessed by them, screaming and shouting with a loud voice. And many who were suffering from palsy or were crippled were restored to health. And there was great rejoicing in that city. Come on. It doesn't matter what your sickness is. If you're crippled or palsy. Huh? Or if you just got a headache, man. Or just a sinus blockage or something. God wants you well and restored and healed and blessed. And wow, wow, wow. Listen to James 5.15 in the Amplified. Listen, listen. Just listen, Annalise will read it for us. Listen and your soul shall have. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Hmm? The prayer of faith shall save the sick restore him to health and even if he has committed sins it shall be forgiven him hmm? God wants you well God wants you well hmm? let's put another point strength how many can do with more strength Yes. Ah, doesn't the Bible say, but they that wait upon the Lord yes. shall renew, shall exchange, shall get restored strength, Amen. and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not grow weary, they shall walk and not grow faint. Hmm? Psalm 103 Verse 4 and 5 says, He satisfy my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like an eagle's. Okay? So not only strength, you get your youth back. Now this is where a lot of people need to say. Say, I can do with that. Hmm? I've got the scripture for you. Job 33. Job 33, verse 21. Yeah, yeah, verse 21. His flesh is so wasted away that it cannot be seen. And his bones that were not seen stick out. Yes, his soul draws near to corruption and his life to the inflictors of death, the destroyers. So it's his spirit, his soul, and his body. Everything is in a very bad position. God's voice may be heard. If there is for the hearer a messenger. If you are a hearer tonight, I am a messenger. 
if you can hear God says, will anyone say restore? Then I will restore. If anyone will open his mouth and speak, I will restore. If there's an angel or an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show to man what is right for him, how to be upright and in right standing with God, believe on the Lord Jesus, you are righteous. Verse 24, bless you. Then God is gracious, listen, God is gracious to him and says, deliver him from going down into the pit of destruction, for I have found a ransom, a price of redemption and atonement. You can write there, the blood of Jesus. God has found a ransom for your whatever. Verse 25, Then the man's flesh shall be restored. It becomes fresher and more tender than a child's. He returns to the days of his youth. Ah. He prays to God. Remember Isaiah 58? We're going to pray and he's going to answer. Prays to God and he is favorable to him. So that he sees his face with joy. For God restores to him his righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. I receive. In Job chapter 1, the Bible says, Job was the richest man in the East. This is God's servant. And he speaks to the devil and says, Have you seen my righteous servant Job? There's none like him. He was not only the most righteous, this man was the richest man. And then from chapter 1, he started losing everything. Lost, 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 lost. And this man was totally nothing left of him. His bones were sticking out. He was sick. He lost all his possessions. His wife left him. His children were killed. His house was burned down. His animals were taken away. All right? Everything. Listen to chapter 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Listen. God turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, Mm. also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Listen, God gave him twice as much as he had before. He was already the richest man before he lost. Now he got double. Okay, read on. Then came there unto him all his brethren and sisters, Mm. and all they had, all they that had been of his acquaintances before. Okay, everybody that knew him before he got in this position. Now remember, nobody wanted him. Everybody rejected him, ignored him, mocked him. Now listen. And they did eat with him in his house, and they bemoaned him. And comforted him over all the evil that the Lord hath brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Ah, for he had had 14,000 sheep. He had 14,000 sheep. In chapter 1, he had 7,000. 6,000 camels. 6,000 camels. He had 3,000 in chapter 1. And 1,000 yoke of oxen. 1,000 yoke of oxen means double, 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 double. Oxen. Okay, he had 500 in chapter 1. And 1,000 lady donkeys. Oh. (laughs) Lady donkeys. (laughs) 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 I'm a lady, lady. (laughs) Lady donkey. (laughs) Imagine those lips. Okay. The guy that made Madagascar must have read that one. Madagascar, lady donkeys. All right? I mean, what I'm trying to say, Exodus 22 says, if something has been taken away or robbed from you, the least that you must be restored is double. The least. In other words, 
you must have double of any blessing in the Bible. I say yes, restore Lord. I say amen to that. I want it. I take it. I receive it. At least double. Bless you. Listen. Listen to Proverbs 6.31. Proverbs it says, if the thief is found or the robber caught, he must restore to you sevenfold. Yes. Whew, I like that one. Job chapter 8. This is the prophetic word for Uncle Job. Verse 21. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter, Job, and your lips with joyful shouting. What will God do? Fill his mouth with laughter and his tongue with rejoicing. What will God do? Fill his mouth with laughter and his tongue with rejoicing. What will God do? Why? Because he was so rich, then he became so poor, now he is really rich. That will make you laugh too. Hmm? So what did he say in Job 42? When God turned the captivity of Job, he had double as much as before. Now listen to this. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream because it seemed so unreal. Then were our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. And they said amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Then we will say the Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. Ha, ha, ha. Turn our, turn to freedom our captivity. And restore our fortunes, O oh Lord. I never had fortunes. How can it be restored? Because it was promised you in a blessing. And if you don't have it, it means you've been robbed of it. And God bless you all. God's going to restore everything that you've been robbed of that you're supposed to have. Second Kings 5. The story is about Naaman, the commander of the army of Syria. Great man, but he was a leper. And then the little girl said, but you know, if they can go to Israel, he can be healed. Remember, and the king of Assyria sent a message to the king of Israel, and he tore his clothes and said, am I a God to heal? And then Elisha was sitting somewhere in his cave, and he heard the whole story. Verse 8. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king asking, why have you rent your clothes? Let Naaman come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at Elisha's door. Elisha sent a messenger saying, Go and walk through Spirit Words Miracle Pool. I mean, it's not exactly like I said it now, but you know, okay, more or less. Go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored. Your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leper. Hmm? Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? 
May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Amen. And his servants came near and said to him, My father, if the prophet had bid you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much rather than when he says to you, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, as the man of God had said. And his flesh was restored like that of a little child, and he was clean. It sounds like that Job 33 that we read. Your flesh shall be fresher than a child. So 17. Huh? The blessings of Abram are yours. If you haven't got it, you've been robbed. And God says, I want to restore. Hmm? Not only the things, but also the years. Imagine you've been struggling since 13 and you are now 83. Imagine God restoring those years. And all of a sudden you jump up and you, hee, you're 13 again. You giggle like a girl on a first date. And you, ah. And your husband says, Sarah, are you okay? Don't you think it's time hmm? yes. that the years are restored? Yes. Imagine if we count all the times that we were unhappy, sad, broke, sick, fever, a cold, not having enough. Imagine we take all those minutes and we count them. God says, I will restore all that to you. Not just the health, not just the things, not just the money, but the years. Every single minute that's been lost in your life. Your prayer life is going to be restored. Remember, you're going to call and God's going to answer. That's restoration. Your health, your soul's going to be restored. In other words, you're going to have peace of mind. Restore to health. Yes. Sickness is of the devil. Yes. Every devil's going to leave you. Yes. And you're going to say the unseen stuff. You're going to call the things that are not as though they already were. You're not going to trust your emotions any longer. Because some days you don't feel as happy as other days. That doesn't change your faith one bit. But you know, because we look at our emotions, we drop our faith life. Don't. There was a time my stomach was standing there because of the cancer. I was so skinny, but I still walked there and there was a woman there with a stomach like that with cancer. She couldn't walk. She was on a bed. I said, pull up the woman. Come, get up. And she was healed and I, I was still sick. Hmm? I didn't feel like praying for the woman. I didn't feel like praying for anyone. But because of the calling, I came to church. Yes. My wife said, stay at home. Everybody will understand. I said, except me. I don't understand. <laughs> but because of something on the inside that calls the unseen into the seen, God says, I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. We're all going to make it in our bodies, in our spirits, in our souls, in our finances, in our homes, in our businesses. Bless, 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 bless. Restoration at least double, but we'd rather go for the sevenfold. Items can do it, like shadows, like cloths. That's why we have prayer papers and prayer cloths. No matter if it's crippled, palsied, headache, whatever sickness it is, strength is going to be restored. Yeah. Huh? 
Psalm 92 says he's going to anoint us with fresh oil and our strength will be like that of a wild ox or a buffalo. Imagine you see a wild ox there in the crawl, eh? Jumping all around God says, your strength is like that. Imagine you sitting in church. Imagine God's going to restore your strength. Your youth, your flesh is going to be fresh. You're going to get double of anything that you ever thought or dreamt or prayed for because you are supposed to be blessed with Abraham. Sevenfold. And all this because we closed with Naaman there at the river and so that's why we have the pool. To go back to that point 11 of the items, the shadows and the cloths, God said to me, build a pool and people can walk through the water after you stir it and they can get whatsoever miracle they need.